Assalamu alaikum students uh, on the behalf of anatomy department of Nasir Medical and Dental College I am Dr Ramna Rafi and I welcome you all on my today's lecture that is the gross anatomy of internal ear and vestibulo cochlear nerve So as we know uh, that uh, we have studied up till now that the ear uh, can be divided into an outer part outer ear the middle ear and the inner ear so the inner ear is the innermost part of the ear and which houses the vestibulo cochlear organs that is uh, the sensory organ which is related to hearing and uh, equilibrium and balance of the body and it lies within the petrous part of temporal bone over here you see this is the petrous part of the temporal bone and what are the function of the internal ear is that it converts the mechanical signals from the middle ear into electrical signals and which can transfer information to the auditory pathway in the brain and to maintain the balance by detecting position and motion from the body so uh, the uh, internal ear uh, as i mentioned in my previous slide that it lies in the petrous part of temporal bone over here you see so this is the middle cranial fossa and this is the petrous part of temporal bone and uh, this is the location of the inner ear so it what it con uh, consists of uh, this uh, inner ear also known as the labyrinth it is uh, having a bony labyrinth and within the bony labyrinth lies the membranous labyrinth so over here you see this is all bony part of the inner ear known as the bony labyrinth and within which lies the membranous part of the inner ear and that is known as membranous labyrinth so this bony labyrinth uh, consisting of cochlea vestibule and semicircular canal has a fluid which is known as perilymph then uh, deeper inside lies the membranous labyrinth and which has a fluid that is known as endolymph so now we are going to discuss uh, uh, the bony labyrinth uh, the parts of the bony labyrinth uh, step wise and then we going to do the parts of the membranous labyrinth step wise so the bony labyrinth as i mentioned earlier it's a series of bony cavities within the petrous part of temporal bone and it has three parts so this is all bony labyrinth uh the bony part of the inner ear that consists of this cochlea in the anterior the most anteriorly placed cochlea in the middle there is a vestibule and posteriorly lies the semicircular canals so let's see individually in the parts of the bony labyrinth that is the cochlea that is the most anteriorly placed part of the bony labyrinth uh, of the inner ear and as you can see this is a, uh, it is just like a shape of a Uh, shell of the snail and it contains cochlear duct and is concerned with the auditory pathway of internal ear so this cochlea the bony labyrinth part of the bony labyrinth the cochlea is placed anteriorly and it contains the cochlear duct which has special specialized receptor cells known as organ of corti which are related with the hearing so what is a modulus so you see students over here this is a central conical axis and that is known as modulus around which the bony canals of the cochlea make two and three quarter turns so the the bony canal of the uh, cochlea the it it makes turns two and three quarter turns around a central conical axis over here you see and this central conical axis around which the cochlea is making turns is known as modulus this modulus will be containing the blood vessels and the spiral ganglion and uh, uh, it uh, basically it providing a central axis around which the cochlea is making turns then spiral lamina it's a spiral ridge of bone over here you see this is spiral lamina this one is spiral lamina this is a ridge of bone that projects from the modulus and it divides this uh, cochlea cochlear canal into two parts so this is a section for this for this spiral lamina you can uh, see from this diagram this is a cochlea and the section has been taken uh, and a magnified image is being shown that this is the spiral lamina and this is all cochlear canal and this is spiral lamina which is a, a bony shelf like projection that divides this cochlear canal into an upper part which is known as scala vestibuli and a lower part known as scala tympani this partition is uh, incomplete the spiral lamina is just dividing this cochlear canal partially into scala vestibular and scala tympani but this partition is being completed further on by this basilar membrane so the scala vestibuli uh, as we studied in the middle ear it uh, communicates 
with the uh, uh, middle ear through fenestra vestibuli, which was closed by foot plate of stapes. These both scala, scala vestibuli, and scala tympani uh, will be uh, communicating with each other at the apex of the cochlea over here at the center, and that is known as helicotrema. So, helicotrema is a central most point and uh, where the scala tympani and scala vestibuli will be communicating with each other. So let's see the middle part of the bony labyrinth after the cochlea, that is the vestibule. So over here you see this is the inner ear and the and most anteriorly placed uh, structure is known as the cochlea. In the middle there is a vestibule and the behind, uh, behind the vestibule lies the semicircular canals. So this is the central part of the bony labyrinth. Over here you see this is a central part of the bony labyrinth and it lies behind the cochlea and in front of semicircular canals. So it lies medial to the middle ear cavity over here you see this is the middle ear cavity and this vestibule lies medial to the middle ear cavity. This vestibule has a, a lateral wall it, over here the lateral wall and a medial wall. So of course you can see this me medial wall is related to internal acoustic meatus and the lateral wall uh, is uh, related to the middle ear and as I mentioned in my previous slide and you have uh, studied the middle ear as well that in the middle ear in the medial wall there was an oval window that was closed by the foot plate of stapes and that oval window was also known as fenestra vestibuli so this fenestra vestibuli was a communication between the middle medial wall of the middle ear and the vestibule of the inner ear so the lateral wall of the vestibule is related to fenestra vestibuli which is closed by foot plate of stapes that opens into the medial wall of the middle ear. Then uh, lateral is related to uh, the medial wall is related to internal acoustic meatus. Lateral wall is having fenestra vestibuli. So over here further on in the medial wall you see there are two spheric, there are two recesses present but this one is known as elliptical recess and this is known as the spherical recess. Just beneath the elliptical recess, there is an opening which is known as opening of aqueduct of vestibule. This opening transmits the endolymphatic duct and small blood vessels. Now let's see the uh, most posteriorly placed part of the bony labyrinth that is semicircular canals. Okay, so semicircular canals, there are three semicircular canals, uh, anterior, also known as the superior, then we have the posterior and we have lateral or horizontal. These semicircular canals, they communicate, they open into the vestibule uh, that is present in the middle and these uh, semicircular canals, they lie at right angle with each other. Each canal has a dilated uh, uh, one end each canal has one end that is dilated and that dilated end of each semicircular canal is known as ampulla. Now, uh, this superior semicircular canal or anterior semicircular canal as we studied in uh, while doing the middle cranial fossa that there was an eminence present on the petrous part of uh, temporal bone that was known as arcuate eminence. So, this superior semicircular canal or anterior semicircular canal reduces an eminence uh, within the anterior surface of the petrous part of temporal bone and that is known as uh, arcuate eminence. So uh, this is the anterior semicircular canal and this is the posterior semicircular canal and this one is the lateral or horizontal semicircular canal. So as you can see in this diagram that the posterior end of anterior semicircular canal and the upper end of the posterior semicircular canal they combine together to form a single opening and that is known as crus commune which opens into the medial wall of vestibule. So vestibule is a central part of the, uh, uh, so vestibule was a central part of the inner ear, uh, bony labyrinth and semicircular canal is the posterior part of the bony labyrinth and while then most anterior place, placed part is the cochlea. So uh, the lateral semicircular canal, it lies uh, in the horizontal plane. So you see this one is a uh, lateral semicircular canal and it lies in the horizontal plane. And this is the anterior semicircular canal, it's posterior end and the upper end of this posterior semicircular canal combined together to form crust commune. These canals open through five openings uh, within the uh, vestibule and uh, within uh, the semicircular canals lie the membranous labyrinth Part of the membranous labyrinth that is semicircular ducts that will be having specialized receptor cells for detecting the 
uh, information regarding equilibrium of the body. So uh, uh, up till now we did uh, the parts of the internal ear that was basically having a bony series of bony cavities known as bony labyrinth within which lies a series of uh, uh, communicating sacs or series of ducts that is known as membranous labyrinth. This bony labyrinth was filled with a liquid known as perilymph and this membranous labyrinth will be having a fluid that is known as the uh, endolymph. So, uh, this membranous labyrinth will be lying within the bony labyrinth and it is a series of communicating sacs and ducts which are suspended within the bony labyrinth. The epithelium of the membranous labyrinth is specialized to form receptors for uh, sound which are known as organ of corti which will be present in the cochlea and uh, receptors for static balance known as macula which will be present in the vestibule and receptors for kinetic balance which are known as cristae or crest no present in the semicircular canals the membranous labyrinth contains endolymph a watery fluid which is similar in composition with intercellular fluid while the bony labyrinth is filled with a perilymph which is similar to extracellular fluid so like the bony labyrinth that we did the bone parts of the bony labyrinth were the cochlea vestibule and semicircular canals similarly the membranous labyrinth will be having three parts which consist of cochlear duct or spiral duct of cochlea having a receptor organ known as organ of corti which will be present within the cochlea over here you see this blue one then organ for static balance present within the vestibule and those are utricle and secule so this one this is all vestibule and the vest within the vestibule the membranous labyrinth has two parts okay so part of the membranous labyrinth within the cochlea is known as spiral duct of cochlea part of the membranous labyrinth within the vestibule of the bony labyrinth is known as utricle and secule this secule and utricle will be having special receptor cells which are related for static balance and those receptor cells are known as maculae. Then the semicircular ducts will be present within the semicircular canals. So you see this blue one are the semicircular ducts within the semicircular canals and their ampulla will be having specialized receptor cells which are responsible for maintaining the kinetic balance of the body and that receptor cells will be known as cristic. So now just similarly the way we did uh, the individual parts of the bony labyrinth that what is cochlea and what it has inside, uh, what is vestibule, what is semicircular canal. So similarly we will be doing individually the parts of the membranous labyrinth. So first is the cochlear duct that is the part of the membranous labyrinth that lies within the bony cochlea. This is also known as scala media and this duct of cochlea is occupying the middle part of the cochlear canal between the scala vestibular and scala tympani. We did that there was a spiral uh, lamina, a bony uh, lamina which is dividing this cochlear canal into two parts scala vestibular and scala tympani. So this membranous part of the uh, uh, bony cochlea that is known as cochlear duct will be uh, enclosing in a triangular shaped space this cochlear duct will be lying in a triangular shape uh, space and that is known as scala media because it will be lying in the middle of vestibuli and tympani. So scala media is alternate name for the cochlear duct and cochlear duct is a membranous part of uh, uh, part of a membranous labyrinth of inner ear lying within the bony cochlea. So this cochlear duct is triangular in cross section and also known as scala media is triangular in cross section it has a floor it has a roof and it has an outer wall so the floor is of course this spiral lamina was ending over here and this division was completed by this basal and membrane so this basal and membrane is forming the floor of this cochlear duct or scala media and this basal membrane will be having organ of corti that is a specialized receptor cells for uh, your hearing then the roof over here is formed by the vestibular membrane and also known as the reasoner's membrane. While the outer wall is bony part formed by the bony wall of the cochlea. This organ of corti resting on the basilar membrane that is on the floor of this cochlear duct. This is all cochlear duct. So this floor of the floor is formed by the basilar membrane 
This organ of corti, also known as specialized receptor cells for hearing, they are innervated by the peripheral processes of the spiral ganglion. You see, this is a spiral ganglion. And this ganglion is for, uh, is basically, this ganglion is lying in the modulus. And the peripheral processes of this ganglion will innervate this organ of corti, while the central processes will combine together to form the cochlear nerve. So in this diagram, you see this is the, uh, now the bony labyrinth has been removed to uh, show you the membranous labyrinth. This is the cochlear duct lying within the bony cochlea. And this duct is connecting, connected to this part of the, part of the uh, membranous labyrinth uh, with lying within the vestibule. This is the saccule and this one is the utricle. This all lies in the vestibule. So this duct of cochlea is connected to the saccule through a duct which is known as ductus reunions. Then in this diagram, you can see that this is the uh, modulus and this is the spiral ganglion and the peripheral processes are innervating this organ of corti and the central processes are combining to form the cochlear nerve. And this is a cross section through the bony turns of the cochlea being taken to show you uh, how it looks like. This is the scala vestibuli, this is scala tympani, this is a uh, spiral lamina and this one is the scalar media that is the cochlear duct. So this is another uh, diagram to show you uh, the basic uh, presentation how these are the turns of the bony cochlea and within which cochlear canal uh, this is uh, the scalar vestibuli and this one is the scalar uh, tympani and within which uh, runs the scalar media uh, in which the cochlear duct is running. And this is the spiral lamina, you see. This spiral lamina is uh, dividing uh, into uh, the cochlear canal into scalar vestibuli and scalar tympani. And within which a triangular shaped uh, structure is present known as scalar media, that is the cochlear canal. And the roof is formed by the vestibular membrane or regional membrane. And the floor is formed by the basilar membrane. And the outer wall is formed by the bony cochlea. Now let's see uh, the part of the membranous labyrinth that lies within the vestibule. So the part of the membranous labyrinth lying within the bony cochlea was the co cochlear duct. Now the part of the membranous labyrinth that lies within the vestibule are two in number, anteriorly saccule and posteriorly the utricle. The saccule lies anterior inferior part of the vestibule and it is connected to the utricle through a utricosecular duct. And the saccule is also connected to the cochlear duct through ductus reunions. Utricle is larger and lies behind the saccule. And it receives, you see, it receives this utricle is receiving this semicircular ducts posteriorly. The duct of the saccule unites with the duct of the utricle to form a ductus endolymphaticus over here, you see the duct from the uh, utricle and duct from the saccule they are combining together to form a ductus endolymphaticus which ends at as a dilatation and that is known as saccus endolymphaticus the floor of the utricle and medial wall of the saccule get thickened over here to form a macula so the uh, that is not being shown over here just you uh, you keep it simple that within the utricle and within the saccule will be lying the specialized receptor organs which are which is known as macula and this macula will be responsible for receiving information regarding maintaining of static balance of the body. So this uh, saccule and utricle is a part of membranous labyrinth that lies within the vestibule. This utricle uh, saccule is combined with this duct of uh, utricle through ductus endolymphaticus. And this saccule is also connected with the cochlear duct through ductus reunions. And this utricle is also receiving the three uh, uh, semicircular ducts posteriorly. And the specialized receptor organs uh, which are present within the utricle and saccule are, is known as macula and they are responsible for the static balance.
Now the part, the uh, last part of the membranous labyrinth that will be lying within the bony semicircular canal will be known as semicircular ducts. So they lie within the bony semicircular canals, and each duct has an opening, has a dilatation just like the bony semicircular canal, and that is known as the ampulla. This ampulla has an uh, specialized receptor cells which uh, are known as ampullary crest. This one or crista or capula. This crista respond to the pressure changes in the endolymph which is caused by movements of the head. So these semicircular ducts are responsible has receptors that have that are responsible for the uh, information regarding kinetic balance of the body. Now let's see uh, vestibular cochlear nerve. So vestibular cochlear nerve is an eight cranial nerve and it is a special uh, sensory uh, nerve which has two components which has a vestibular component and a cochlear component. So the vestibular part will be uh, conveying impulses regarding uh, the balance of the body uh, with the position and movements of the head and the cochlear part will be responsible for the impulses associated with the hearing. So the vestibular and cochlear parts they leave uh, the ventral surface of the brain, uh, brain stems with the pontomandibular junction and uh, they run laterally in the posterior cranial fossa to enter the internal caustic meatus along with the seventh nerve. So here in this diagram you see this is the vestibular component, this is the cochlear component. They combined form vestibular cochlear nerve and uh, which runs within the internal caustic meatus. So the course of the vestibular cochlear nerve, uh, you see this vestibular nerve originates from the uh, it originates from the pontomedullary junction. So this is the pons and the medulla arises from the pontomedullary junction and enters into the internal acoustic meatus and its branches supply the sensory receptors for the equilibrium in the uh, semicircular class that is the crista and within the uh, macula of uh, macula of secule and neutricle. The cochlear nerve uh, it arises uh, also having the same course and uh, it uh, reaches the modulus of the internal ear, the modulus of the cochlea and where the peripheral process of the spiral ganglion will innervate the organ of corti while the central processes will be forming the cochlear nerve and it's responsible for the sense of hearing. So the vestibular cochlear nerve is the eight cranial nerve containing special sensory fibers. It has two components, the vestibular component and the cochlear component. The vestibular component is responsible for the balance and equilibrium of the body, while the cochlear component is responsible for the sense of hearing. So uh, let's discuss the vestibular component first. Uh, the vestibular component uh, uh, has uh, the uh, fibers, the receptor cells are present in the macula of the utricle and secule of the vestibule. and within the crystal ampullaris of the ampulla of the semicircular ducts. So the spiral gang, uh, the vestibular ganglion is situated within the internal acoustic meatus. The peripheral processes, uh, they uh, innovate these uh, special receptor cells uh, while the central processes, they form the vestibular nerve that passes to the internal acoustic meatus and ends in the vestibular nuclei. While the cochlear component, the first order neurons of this cochlear component uh, are situated in spiral ganglion, which is situated at the base of the spiral lamina, that is within the modulus. The peripheral processes, uh, they innovate the specialized receptor organ known as the spiral organ of corti within the cochlear duct. While the central processes, they form the cochlear nerve and uh, that passes to the internal caustic meatus and end in the dorsal and ventral cochlear nuclei. Now let's uh, discuss the clinicals of our today's lecture. The clinicals, uh, they are very brief. Uh, of course, uh, the vestibular cochlear nerve has a vestibular component which is responsible for maintaining the balance of the body, equilibrium of the body, while the cochlear component is responsible for the hearing. So if there are any lesions of the vestibular cochlear nerve and uh, that could uh, lead to a series of symptoms that include tinnitus that uh, is Basically, this one is the tinnitus. It means uh, what happens in tinnitus. There, there is continuous ringing or buzzing uh, sound present uh, uh, occurring within the ear. That is basically not coming outside the ear. So you you feel a humming, a buzzing sound, a ringing sound, uh, just coming within the in, inside the ear. Then we have a damage or loss of hearing and vertigo, of course, due to the loss of uh, the vestibular part. Then acoustic neuroma is a slow growing.
benign tumor and the, of the neural ml cells basically it affects the uh, uh, the part of the pontomedullary junction where the uh, vestibular cochlear nerve is arising so this nerve uh, is being compressed by this benign tumor and due to the compression uh, the, if the cochlear part is involved there will be loss of hearing and if the vestibular part or is involved or both are involved then it will be loss of hearing as well as uh, along with the vertigo then Meniere's syndrome it is basically characterized by the recurrent attacks of tinnitus vertigo and hearing loss which is accompanied by sensitivity to noises so what happens it's usually being said that uh, it is due to the abnormal amount of uh, endolymph within this membranous labyrinth uh, that leads to distorted balance information from the semicircular canal distorted uh, sound information from the cochlea and this endolymphatic duct and sac becomes backed up uh, with an excess amount of endolymph and uh, from uh, this distortion this distorted information it travels to the brain and it leads to uh, the recurrent attacks of tinnitus vertigo and hearing loss so this is a normal inner ear being shown and which is a normal amount of endol endolymph within the membranous labyrinth and you see these are the swollen uh, 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 part of the membranous labyrinth with excess amount of endolymph and this is usually said to be the cause of uh, recurrent attacks of uh, tinnitus vertigo and hearing loss and that is known as Meniere's syndrome. So thank you so much students for your cooperation. I hope you have understood very well our today's lecture. In case of any queries you can consult us anytime. Thank you and best of luck.